And we're live. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Sean Elvis here. It's been a while, but Lord has blessed me and blessed us all with another great message today in God's holy word. So let's get this started, shall we? Um, I got some announcements, but I'll do it after the opening reading. Um, as always, let's start with the Soul Stirring Songs and Hymn Book. We're going to sing... Uh, 324 draw me near draw me near uh probably not one of my best songs but you know what all we have to do is make a joyful noise to the lord anyways so let's sing out for in the name of jesus today right let's sing out in the name of jesus here we go <clears throat> I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith, and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend. When I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. Draw me nearer, near, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, near, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me nearer, near, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, near, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Amen. Amen. I love that song, you know. Today's message is all about getting closer to God. You know, I've been getting a lot closer to God lately. And it feels great, never felt better. It always feels great when you're closer to God and uh, living the righteous path. But anyway, as always, let's uh, open with our opening reading in our King James Bible. If you have one, you can follow along. I'll be reading in uh, uh, Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33, it's the second book in the Bible. Uh, Exodus, uh, towards the last chapter. Close to the last chapters. Anyways, Exodus chapter 33, and we're going to start in verse 7 and read through the end of the chapter. Let's read. The Bible says, And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that every one which sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. And it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door and all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man 
speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again to the camp, uh, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send me. If thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I might find grace in thy sight. And consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up thence, hence, excuse me. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not that is it not in that thou goest with us? So, so shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken of. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth away, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but the face shall not be seen. The word of the Lord. Greetings, friends and colleagues, brothers and sisters. Welcome back. It's been a while. It's Sean Alvis. You know, this opening reading, you know, the Israelites were wandering around in the desert for, for years before they settled into the promised land. And, and you know, I definitely have done my fair share of uh, wandering um, around this past eight months that I've been away. But, you know, I, I got some exciting news that I kind of wanted to talk about first, you know, before I get into this message. It's a quick message, but uh, I've decided recently... Through the uh, for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, of course, um, but to, but to put put my hand back to the plow and uh, really get to work for the Lord. And so uh, the big news is I've planted a brand new church here in uh, Denver, Colorado. It's not it's not much so far, so far. But you know, just like Jesus said, all it takes is the small little grain of a mustard seed, uh, the faith to move mountains, and that's what I have right now: the faith of the grain of a mustard seed. And I'm trying to move the mountains out here, the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> but you know, anyways, um, if you want more information, that'll come in the weeks ahead, of course. But uh, right now, I got a Facebook page called Like Christ Minded Fellowship. Like Christ hyphen Minded Fellowship. And uh, also, there's a YouTube page that I'm going to put content on as well. But basically, you know, this church is going to be a little different than any other church out there. It's going to be... Uh, a local community of people of, who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, of course, read the Bible, all that stuff. But, uh, you know, more importantly than that, you know, it, it's going to be a community of people who really want to serve the Lord. You know, who really, specifically by like doing charitable works, doing community service, and most importantly, uh, helping each other locally here in the community. You know, just building a network of people. You know, I've, I've been to a lot of churches out there. Um... And, we, you know, you can go in, you can listen to the sermons and everything, and um, sometimes there's such a big crowd, you just, you get lost in the crowd, right? And sometimes you can feel disconnected, right? You can feel like you're not really a part of the church. And, and you know, I wanted a, a style of church that's, you know, truly for the people, by the people. You know, it's the people's church. It's, uh, it's your church, a place where you can come and feel like, hey, this is my church, Right? I have a place in this church. I have a part in this church. I'm not just another number in the crowd putting in my money in the offering plate. You know what I'm saying? But 
but a place where you know you can go serve each other meet uh local people and help each other out in a place where of course we could all serve the lord together whether it be going out soul winning that's what i've been doing on the weekends now is knocking on doors and getting people saved and preaching them the gospel but you know also doing community service in a place where like-minded uh believers can network with each other and and do good works for the lord together and bring each other closer but you know we don't have a fancy building right now we don't have a crowd but we, we do we really need one all we need is the lord on our side and he'll go before us and he'll show us the way but you know um we're just gonna get the ball rolling today um uh just recently i met a lot of saved people in the in the local neighborhood and i had the privilege of meeting a few of them and you know i, I don't believe that there's just one way to have a church and to run a church you know i think uh i'm not saying that other churches are wrong and my way is the right way and um but you know i think god likes variety and you know i think he, he likes to see people who aren't a part of a church to get together and form a church right and start serving the lord in their own unique way because everybody has different gifts talents and every church has a different strength and unique gift and talent of course to serve the lord and i don't know just pray for a like christ-minded fellowship in your prayers uh, it's not going to be a corporation uh it's not going to be a 501c3 nonprofit organization it's just going to be a an organic grassroots church for like-minded believers to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, um, yeah, with that said, uh, speaking of serving the Lord, I'll get back to my sermon. Get back to my sermon. You know, who is the Lord? What is the Lord? What does the word Lord even mean? You know, it's kind of an old English word. Lord. We don't really use that in our modern English, uh, the word Lord. Nowadays, you know, sometimes we might say the uh, the term landlord. Have you heard that? Like maybe you uh, you pay rent to your landlord and he's the one who owns the property, right? So basically, the Lord is just a word that means ruler or owner, right? He's he's the one who owns who owns things, right? He's the ruler, one in charge, the boss, if you will, you know. And and you know, so when we're referring to the Lord Jesus Christ or the Lord God Almighty, right? Um, we're basically calling him the ruler, the ruler of the whole universe, right? The creator of the whole universe. Um, and it's not that we're slaves, right? But, uh, it's not like we're forced. Um, no, we, we are willing servants of the Lord, right? We, we willingly signed up to serve the Lord. No, mainly because we know that God blesses us and serves us with everything, right? He's given us life. He's given us a home in heaven. So we're glad to serve the Lord, our Lord. And to be like him, you know, because Jesus came and he served us and taught us how to serve. So we try to serve back. Hence the title of the new church, Like Christ Minded Fellowship, right? We want to be like Christ. We want to be just like, just a servant like our Lord Jesus, right? Jesus Christ came. He died for us. He served us. He, he healed people and he saved us ultimately, but uh, he loves us, right? And he wants us to go out there. And love other people and serve other people in return and be servants, right? So our Lord is not just a ruler who, who tells us what to do, but he also serves us, of course. And in the opening verses we read in Exodus chapter 33, you know, we read that uh, Moses and the Israelites had built a tabernacle to worship the Lord and, and, and a place for the Lord to live, right? And, you know, in our lives, we need to build a tabernacle for the Lord. You know, the Bible says that our temple is a, is is a, our excuse me our body is a temple of the holy spirit right so if if you're saved you believe in the lord jesus the holy spirit lives inside you that it, our body is in a way a tabernacle for the lord to live so we need to take care of our bodies first and foremost you know but i wanted to focus in on uh verse number 10 there in exodus chapter 33 if you would please look again and just let's focus in on it and let's read it again it says Exodus 33, verse number 10 says, And all the people, all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. Now the first thing that we read in this verse is that all the people, 
saw a cloudy pillar, right? Now this cloudy pillar, what is that? That's that's the presence of God, right? That is uh, the presence of God. That the, the pillar represented, you, you saw this big cloud of smoke, right? This big, huge, thick cloud of smoke, and that basically represented the presence of God. Now, one thing that every church needs is all the people to see God, right? Now, everybody in the church needs to be saved. Now, that's not always the case. Sometimes people wander into the church and they're not saved. Now, the thing is, is you're going to have a really tough time seeing God if you're not saved. If you don't know him personally, right? You don't accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. But, you know, the first thing we read in this verse is all the people saw the cloudy pillar they all saw the presence of god you know that's why we need to get the pe get people out there the gospel so that they can see the presence of god another thing i wanted to point out in this verse is all the people rose up right they didn't just sit there you know you know your service for god and your walk with god if you want to get closer with god and you can't just sit around and do nothing you have to rise up and do something right you have to worship the lord and in spirit and in truth. You can't just sit around and do nothing. You know, not, not the Bible doesn't say that some people stood up. It says all people stood up, right? So a lot of times in church, you have some people who think they're just going to sit in the back and, and spectate. <laughs> no, no, we need to rise up and we need to all be doing something for the Lord. They all had a part to play, you know, I'm sure. Um, Every single one of us, you know, like I said in the beginning, you know, we all have a special talent and a gift that we can offer the world and, 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 and we can serve in the church. So, you know, never try to never think that, hey, uh, I'm this way. I, I can't do nothing for the Lord. No, of course you could do something like just like the Bible says, all the people stood up and worshiped the Lord, every single man and, and woman at that. Now, why do you think they did that? You know, maybe one reason is the Lord was compelling them, right? Maybe the Lord was compelling them. You know, remember the opening song we sang, Draw Me Near, right? Um, the Lord was drawing them nearer to him, right? With that big pillar of smoke, right? He's just drawing everybody with his amazing presence. Now, let me ask you a question. You know, is the Lord compelling you? You know, is the Lord drawing you closer? Do you feel him? Do you see his presence? You know, you say, well, I don't know, Sean. I don't feel nothing, right? I don't see nothing. I don't see no pillar of smoke, Sean. <clears throat> well, are, are you looking hard enough? Because he's there. You know, have you heard that phrase, the Lord works in mysterious ways? You know, there's a lot of times the Lord's right there in your life. Maybe you're just not focusing in on him. Maybe you're just not seeing him. You know, just like that pillar of smoke, right? Everybody can see it, right? But sometimes, you know, we can't explain why God works in the mysterious ways that he does, right? Just like this pillar of smoke, you know, it's, it's so strange to me. And, you know, I'm sure it was strange to them back then. Like, why is God appearing in a pillar of smoke? It makes no sense. But that's what he does. That's the way he works. And, and sometimes in mysterious ways that we can't understand, but we just have to recognize it and rise up, do something and worship God. All right. That's, that's our duty. That's our job. Anyway, um, I just wanted to point that out. And also, you know, that, that God saved the Israelites. Remember, this is a time when God had already delivered the Israelites out of Egypt, out of the bondage of slavery. And, you know, they're wandering around in the desert for years. And, and you know, a lot of the times in our life, we're wandering around. We don't know what we're going to do, right? But we just need to keep our eyes focused on God and, and understand that, just like God led the Israelites out of the Red Sea, God will lead you out of whatever trials and tribulations that you're going through, right? He'll lead you to safety, just like he led the Israelites to safety. You know, that's how our lives are, you know. The Lord says we need to follow him. We don't know where he's leading us, but he's leading us to the promised land eventually, right? We just have to obey his commandments and do the right thing. Now, when we do the right thing, we're in God's hands, right? We're Because God's in control, and when you're in God's hands, friends, I don't know, I don't know about you, but uh, when, I, when I feel 
like I'm in God's hands and I'm doing the right thing and I'm living a righteous life. I feel like I feel great, just like I started with this video, right? It feels when I'm so close with the Lord, I feel great. And, you know, that's what we all need to do. And we could always get closer to the Lord, you know, we could always get closer to the Lord. Now, I, I want to go to the, my second uh, part is uh, turn to turn your Bible, if you would, to John, the New Testament, chapter 15. We're going to go to the gospel according to St. John chapter 15. Uh, where am I at? <clears throat> and we're going to see real quick how, you know, Jesus doesn't just want to be our Lord and rule over us, right? He, he also wants to be our friend, you know? Have you ever had a friend that uh, you just love being around all the time? You, you just can't be uh, um, separated with them, right? I remember back when I was in grade school, I used to have this friend and... We used to do everything together, you know, recess every day together, lunch together, you know, uh, we used to always sit, sit next to each other in every single class and sometimes the teacher have to separate us and say, hey, you guys are having way too much fun over there, you need to focus. But uh, you, you never have a friend that you just love so much being around all the time, you know. Well, that's how God wants to be with us. He wants to be our friend and be with us all the time. He wants to be good friends with us. He wants to draw us near to him and he wants to be near to us. Let's uh, let's read in John chapter 15, and we're going to start in verse 12, and we're going to read to verse 15. <clears throat> you know, let's start in verse 11. Let's start in verse 11. The Bible says in John chapter 15, verse 11, it says, And this is Jesus' words. He said, These things have I spoken unto you, <clears throat> that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Man, I love reading the words of Jesus, man. It's such a great passage. You know, Jesus calls us his friends. His friends. You know, he doesn't just say, hey, you're my servant. You need to serve me and do what I say. No. He says, you're my friend. Right? Isn't that a great feeling? You know, that our God, our almighty God, our best friend in the universe... It's not just our Lord, but he's our friend. He's our good friend. He cares about us. He wants to be with us. I mean, how cool is that? It's pretty cool, right? Um, God wants to wants us to be our friend, right? He doesn't just want to be our Lord and tell us what to do. He wants to be our friend. And, you know, the Bible says uh, we can be friends with God. You know, uh, turn over to James. James, one of the uh, last books of the Bible. Um Philemon, Hebrews, James, if you hit Peter, you've gone too far, Peter and John. But James, look at James chapter 4. James chapter 4, and we're just going to read a, a short verse here in verse 7. Or, excuse me, we're going to read verse 8. <clears throat> excuse me. The Bible says in James 4, 8, Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts. Ye double-minded, draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. See, the thing is, not only do we need to draw nigh to God, but, you know, we should also draw nigh to each other, right? Of course, we need to cleanse our hands and, and stop sinning and stop being double-minded and, and, you know, saying one thing and doing another thing. But, you know, we also need to draw, part of drawing uh, close to God is drawing close to other of other like-minded believers, right? Helping each other out, supporting each other, you know, because this world it can be a cruel, tough place sometimes, a mean place sometimes, right? I mean, look at all of the apostles of Jesus, right? All the apostles of Jesus were executed, they were killed, they were martyred for their beliefs, what they believed in in Jesus and God, and. Uh, but what got them through, right? How did they get through that trial and that tough period in their lives? They had each other. 
They had each other. They drew, they drew closer together with each other. And the closer you, uh, you draw to each other, you know, you also have fellowship with the Lord. Because the Lord likes us to be together. He likes fellowship, right? Of like-minded Christians, right? Like, so, like Christ-minded fellowship, right? That's why I called the church name that. Um, but anyway, part of drawing closer to God, my point is, is that, you know, you need to stick with other like-minded believers, right? To help each other through this storm of life, right? Because it'll get you down, right? People can get you can get you down, but if we stick together, we're a lot stronger that way. Because, you know, Jesus said that he, he's sending us out in a world, you know, he compared the world to wolves. He said, I send you out like sheep among wolves, you know, for the slaughter. So, you know, sheep, they're always staying together, right? Because... They're stronger in numbers. I mean, if you, but if you get one sheep out by itself, um, it, it's easy prey for the wolves. But uh, also, you know, like the old saying goes, you know, two minds are better than one, right? Two people is always better than one. When trying to accomplish things, you know, I mean, when I go out soul winning, I usually go by myself. But, you know, and, and it's not that I don't love going soul winning and you know, I'll go alone if I have to, but I always love to go with somebody. You know, when I have when I have a brother call me up or, you know, and say, hey, Sean, you know, maybe I can't be there with you, but, you know, let's go to spirit together. You know, I've done that before and and it's, it's just a great, it's a more uplifting and powerful way when you go with a fellow believer into into battle, into into the world, right into this crazy world. Um and you know friends that's just my message for the day it's it's short it's simple it's sweet and uh we just we need to draw closer to god right and if and if we're going to draw closer to god we need to do, start it starts first with first with ourselves of course um we need to cleanse our we need to cleanse our hands we need to, we need to stop doing the things that we're not supposed to be doing and we need to start doing the things that we should be doing right so maybe there's things in your life that you need to start doing. Maybe you start reading your Bible more, right? Maybe you start uh, go talking about Jesus more. Maybe you need, may, how's your prayer life? You know, maybe you need to pray more. Whatever it is, you need to draw yourself closer to God. Maybe you need to uh, network or or start talking with uh, other like minded believers. You know, get some get some good friends in your life. You know, because my grandma used to tell me all the time. You know, show me your friends, and I'll show you who you are. Right. Um, so our friends are, are, are very, you know, if you have the wrong type of friends and they're getting you in trouble, you know, maybe you need to, to draw farther away from them and draw closer to God. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, when we when we draw ourselves closer to God, we can eventually uh, speak to him like a friend, you know, just like Moses did face to face, face to face. Moses spoke with God. That That's amazing. You know, I wish I can get that close one day in my life where I can talk to God face to face. You know, one day I know in heaven we'll see him, but Moses in his flesh <laughs> spoke with God face to face. How amazing, you know, but we can, you know, we absolutely can. You know, don't think that you can't um, draw yourself closer to God. We just have to purify ourselves. The Bible says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. So it, it can be done. The Bible is not lying to us. So maybe we just clean up our lives a little bit, um, get a little closer to God, get closer with each other. You know, we just need to ask ourselves, how bad do we want to get close to God, you know? Or do we want to get closer to the world, you know? Because you can't be a friend of the world and a friend with God at the same time, right? So you have to choose. Do I want to get close to God today or do I want to get close to the world and, and go do all that worldly stuff? I don't know about you, friends, but I want to get closer to God. I want to see the power of God. I want to see that smoke, that big pillar of smoke. And I want to see all my brothers and all my, all my sisters on my left and my right hand side. I want to see you all worship and rise up and praise God together. And, and I want to see the power of God working in your life and in my life and in all the lives of my, uh, of my friends and my family and my neighbors, you know, that, you know, I want to see us all worshiping God together in spirit and in truth, just like the Bible says. You know, that means uh, in spirit, we, ha we, have to, we have to be right with God, right? We have to be doing the right things and thinking the right thoughts and, 
and and what and in and in truth we have to believe the right things right we can't be believing lies how are we going to do that we need this book we need the holy bible we need the bible to tell us what the truth is you know like my opening uh my opening um intro video says sanctify them by the truth for thy word is truth the bible is going to tell us what's true and what's not true right and what and and that's how we're going to worship god in spirit and in truth because god's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge so we need the knowledge so we can know the truth and the truth will set us free Anyway, that's my message for the day, guys. It's a short, sweet message. I hope uh, I hope this blessed you as much as it blessed me. Um, and l- let's just get out there and conform ourselves to the image of God. Let's be more Christ-minded, and let's be uh, not conformed to the image of this world. Right? We we want to be formed in the image of God. And I and I'll pray for you guys. And God bless this message. And God bless you all for listening. Thank you so much. And as always, I will give God the last word. If you want to follow along, I'll be reading Psalms chapter 100. Psalms chapter 100. But before I go, uh, let's just bow in prayer like I always do. So let's bow in prayer and then uh, give God the last word. Thanks for listening, guys. Have a blessed day. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, it's been a while for this. For these videos, Lord, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to preach your message, Lord, and your word. I don't take that lightly, Father. Um, Just thank you so much, Lord. Uh, I thank you so much for this message and this story of Moses, how how you spoke with him so many years ago. It's hard to imagine, Lord, um, that, you know, that tabernacle in the Israelite camp so many years ago. What a sight it must have been to see your presence, Lord. I, I, I can just see all the all the people rising up and worshiping you with your amazing presence right there. And Lord, I want to see that here in Denver. I want to see your amazing presence here in Denver and all the people rise up and worship you together, Lord. And you loved your people way back then uh, to lead them out of Egypt into the promised land. And Lord, I know you love your people here today just as much as you did back then. And I, and I pray that you be with uh, us people here in Denver and, and uh, all the people that I've met recently and all the people that I haven't met yet, Lord, I pray that you be with them. And Lord, I ask that you draw each one of us closer to you, Father, and and also draw us closer to each other, Lord. Help us uh, get to know each other and be able to bring our gifts and our talents that you gave us together to help each other and to reach the lost people out there in our community and 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 also reach uh, other people who uh, we haven't met yet father um just be with us and we want to enrich our lives and enrich the lives of those around us with your presence and your power lord we we know that you're here with us you're always here with us of course but we we just want to be closer lord we we know we can always get closer to you just like moses got face to face with you lord we want to get really close to you lord and and be your friend you said you said you would be our friend and lord we want to get inseparable with you lord and we we want to put the world behind us in this cruel mean world and and just get close to you father and uh draw us close to you as a people personally and and also as a community lord and you know, I'm not going to name any names right now, Father, but you know, you know the names of the people that I've met recently. And Lord, I ask that you show your power to these people and to your people, all your people, and even the people that, uh, that I haven't met yet, Lord. I ask that you uh, lead me t- and guide all of us to- towards each other. Just like you showed the Israelites uh, the way to the promised land, Lord, show us the way. And guide us the way that you would have us to go to accomplish your will for the for the glory of your son, Jesus. Because, Lord, we're so thankful for your son, Jesus, and what he taught us and the way to be, Lord. Please just keep drawing us closer. Guide us as we're here to serve you, Lord. We love you so much, and we thank you for this message. And we thank you for being our friend. Lord, draw us us closer together. In Jesus' name I pray. 
Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day in Jesus. As always, God's getting the last word. Psalms 100, if you want to read along. Have a good day. Psalm 100. A psalm of praise. The Bible says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. God bless you guys.